Hey, how's it going? We're here to talk about the lead position and the chase position as it pertains to a pilot car driver, the lead car and the chase car. I'm an eight-year veteran myself, and I've experienced the ups and downs of the pilot car industry. And at this point, I'm just here to help and do what I can to help those that's trying to get into the industry so they can avoid all the pitfalls I ran into myself. Like I say, I'm just here to help, share what I know, and do what I can to help. Here you're gonna find the most in-depth information about the pilot car industry. So if that's what you're looking for, be sure to subscribe so you can get notifications when I drop new videos. I drop new content every Tuesday, so be sure to tune in. So today we're gonna to be talking about the basic positions of a pilot car driver, which is the lead and the chase. And we're gonna break those positions down. Now generally, when you see one of those big trucks out there with the oversized loads and last flashing and whatnot, you're generally gonna see a regular vehicle in the front of it and one in the back of it. Those are the pilot cars, of course, we covered that in the last video. Now the car that's in front of it, just as it sounds, that's the lead car. The one in the back of it, again, just as it sounds, that's the chase car. Now once you get out there and start working as a pilot car driver, you'll see that everybody tends to want to be the chase car and that's because it's the easiest position out there for a pilot car driver. And because it is the easiest, I encourage everyone that's just starting out to start off as a chase car. And that simply means to make yourself available, not just as a pilot car driver, but specifically make yourself available as a chase. With that, companies will know that you're not ready to be a lead or you're not a lead or qualified to be a lead and they won't bring you on as a lead and you'll be lost once you get out there because you've never done a lead before and you're not prepared for it. Make yourself available as a chase. Now what a chase car generally does is the main thing is get lanes for the truck driver. The truck driver is uh, depending on the size of the load. They can't see good enough to switch lanes knowing that there's no cars in the way. So your main job as a chase is gonna be clearing the lanes so that truck driver can switch lanes when he needs to switch lanes. There's other uh, details of the job, but that is the main, that's gonna be 80% of your job is getting lanes for this driver. So with that said, you can kind of see why that is the easiest position, because you're mainly gonna be getting lanes for the entire route. There is some traffic blocking that is involved in all uh, jobs as a pilot car driver, whether you're the lead or the chase, that comes into play a little bit later when they're making turns or when they're coming out of a parking lot after spending the night at a parking space. But your main job as a chase is gonna be getting those lanes. Now as a lead car, you're gonna be out there in the front and what really separates the lead car from the chase car is that the lead car is gonna be responsible for the whole crew following the route lead car the truck driver included in that chase and because this is so crucial many tend to run from being the lead and they rather be the chase because there's no real responsibility there and I say that because when a oversized load uh, gets its route or sets up the route knowing what states they're gonna have to go through they then submit for a permit from each of those states that allowed them to go through those states. Now, when they do that, the state is gonna send back a permit and this permit is gonna have a specific route that they will have to follow to be allowed to go through that state. If they get off that route, they can get ticketed. Therefore, it's a big responsibility to keep that truck driver and his load on that route. And that's the responsibility of that lead car. So it's a little bit of pressure on the lead. However, if you know how to follow maps or map instructions or even a, not specifically a GPS because the GPS is gonna take you the shortest route. Unless you have a software installed where you can put your own route into that GPS, then that makes it a heck of a lot easier if you have that software. If you're just following a map, then you're gonna have to be aware and, and, and really know how to read your map and know what uh, streets and back roads they're sending you on so you're aware and alert and able to keep everybody on route but that's the main difference between a chase car and a lead car and why so many people tend to run toward that chase and not so much the lead 
um, knowing the lead or knowing how to lead will make yourself that much more valuable out there. And there's other ways to make yourself valuable in this industry as well. But those are one of the ways that you can get yourself a brisk of reading maps or even get that software that you can plug in Pacific routes. If you can get that software, you set yourself apart. There's other duties of a lead, uh, such as watching out for obstacles and objects in the road or in the path. Uh, that's going to be a main piece besides staying on top of that route. You, there may be roadkill in the street. There may be a tire in the street. There may be a hitchhiker on the side of the road. It's kind of close to the, the, the path. There may be an abandoned car on the side of the road that also may be kind of close to the road or the path. So these things you'll be watching out for and just sending a signal back via CB radio to the truck driver so he knows to watch out for these things as well. But these are the things that you're gonna be doing as a lead and as a chase car, as, your, as a pilot car driver. It gets a little bit more detailed than that as far as training is concerned. I wanna stress again that that certification class that is required for all pilot car drivers to get before they start driving. That class is not a training class. That class teaches you the safety measures of how to do your job out there as a pilot car driver. So it teaches a lot of safety uh, elements to the industry. It doesn't teach you how to be a lead or be a chase. Also, it gets a little bit more interesting when you guys get on a one lane highway or one lane road. So things get very specific. You want to learn what's going on or, or to learn the ins and outs of actually being a lead and actually being a chase car, especially a lead when it comes to uh, one lane highways and one lane roads. Blocking traffic is another key component, which I kind of touched on earlier. Safety vests, portable uh, handheld flags, rather. Um, things of that nature you're gonna need when it comes to blocking traffic. Most of the time it's done inside the vehicle, although they're gonna teach you in the safety class to get out the vehicle. A lot of times you don't have time to get out that vehicle and stop traffic. It's gonna be done in the vehicle. But those times, those instances come up, like I said, when you guys have parked overnight and say a truck stop and it's time to come out of that parking lot, traffic is gonna need to be blocked when you're making a turn onto a street or you're in a small town or whatnot, a lot of times traffic is gonna need to be blocked as well because you're dealing with tight turns and uh, city roads, smaller city roads. So there's another element of polycarn as well besides the ongoing getting lanes and watching out for obstacles in the highway. One thing I did forget to mention real quick is that a lead car generally is paid more a little bit more than the chase car is paid and that's because of the extra pressure that is on or extra responsibility that is placed on the lead car so generally as a lead car you'll make more money a little bit more money per mile than the chase car even with that people still tend to run toward that chase car because like i said it's just so easy but all in all, the job is easy, period. It's just simple driving, simple communication with the driver. Real quick, I want you guys to do me a favor and drop in the comments and let me know what has you interested in the pilot car industry. What is it about the pilot car industry that interests you or that catches your eye or what makes you want to get into the, into the industry? Also, drop in the comments and let me know if there's anything I can help you with as far as any subjects or topics that you guys want me to speak on. Also, if I gave you good content today, go ahead and hit that like button. Share it with a friend or family member that you know that may be interested in the pilot car industry as well. And if you'd like to schedule a call, go to pilotboy.life. The link is in the description as well. And from there, we can schedule the time to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Meanwhile, I'll see you guys on the next video.